Hi students, this is Ms. Tomorrow, and today we're going to do word problems using piecewise equations. So in our first example, it says a long distance calling plan charges a dollar for any call up to 20 minutes long and seven cents for each additional minute or part of a minute. So the first thing we're going to do is write an equation. It says to use bracket notation to write a formula for the cost C of a call as a function of its length T in minutes. So C or F of T equals, so the first thing is we're going to pay a dollar. And when are we going to pay a dollar? Any call up to 20 minutes. So that's zero less than T less than or equal to 20. Okay, now anything past 20 minutes, we're going to pay an extra seven cents for. So we're still paying our dollar plus, and then we got seven cents and it's for anything beyond 20 minutes. So we're going to write this as T minus 20. Oops. There we go. Now, why are we subtracting the 20? Because we already got charged for that with the dollar in the first place. So this is for T greater than 20 minutes. Now, let me try to explain it so it makes more sense. Let's say I have a call and it's 21 minutes long. 21 minutes means I have a dollar plus 21 minus 20 minutes is one extra minute times seven cents, which would be a dollar and seven cents. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now we're going to graph it. So I'm going to take a look at my graph. I already set it up for you. I'm counting by fives for minutes, but I'm labeling every other. And then I started, I need to put a little break in zero started at one dollar and then I went up 30 35 cents each line because if I have five minutes times seven cents it's 35 minutes extra so we're going to do a zero at, or an open circle at the one and it goes up to 20 minutes there we go okay now after 20 minutes every five minute call past that is an extra 35 cents so it just kind of Goes up just like that. Okay. What is the domain in the range of this function? Well, the domain is the x value, so x is greater than. Actually, we should write that as an inequality. Actually, I was right. X is greater than or equal to zero because the x values are going to keep going up even though I didn't graph them all. And then the range, the lowest y value is zero, is at 1, so the y values are greater than or equal to 1 minute. Okay, let's take a look at the second question. It says, I have a summer job and it pays time and a half for overtime. Overtime is if you work more than 40 hours. After that, it's one and a half times your hourly rate of $7 an hour. So we're going to write and graph a piecewise equation that gives my weekly pay in terms of the number of hours I work. So P, or F of H, equals, all right, if I work 40 hours, it's $7 an hour. So 7H, and that's for hours in between 0 and 40. Now, the second part, if I work 40 hours, I get $7 an hour. So that's going to be 7 times 40 is $280. So I'm going to make $280 already for my 40 hours. Now, anything past that is 1 and a half times 7 hours, so or $7 an hour. So 7 times 1 and a half is 10.50, so it's going to be 10, an extra 10.50 for anything past 40 hours. So I have to do H minus 40. So in other words, just to make, make it make sense, actually let me do this, this is H greater than 40. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to work 40 hours, I'm going to make $280. But let's say I work an extra hour. So let's say I'm at 41, whoops, 41 hours. 
So if I'm at 41 hours, 41 minus 40, that's in my extra hour, I'm going to make, instead of $7, um, $10.50. Okay? So we had to subtract out the 40 hours that we already accounted for with a 280. All right, so let's set it up. I'm going to start with zero, and I'm going to go with, we'll count by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. These are hours. And then on the side, if I were to make a table, it's going to be $70 an hour for the first 40 hours. So I'm going to count by 70s. That's dollars. Okay. So to graph it, at zero hours, obviously I'm not going to make any money. So there's my open circle. So it's $70 every 10 hours. So there's up to 40. And then after that, I'm making $10.50 for every hour past that. So at 50 hours, it's going to be 290. I'm sorry, that's for the extra hour. So if I work 50 hours, that's an extra 10 hours. So that's going to be 385. So 385, we'll say, is about right there. And then for an extra 20 hours, that's up to 490. So it just kind of slopes a little steeper. How much will I make if I make if I work 45 hours? I'm going to use my second equation. So it will be 280 plus 1050. And then that would be an extra 5 hours past 40. So that's $332.50. Okay, let's take a look at our next equation. Um, it says to write and graph a piecewise function for the parking charges shown on the sign. So parking on weekends costs $3 for every half an hour and $8 maximum for 12 hours. So we want to probably write an equation first. So we got $3, and that's for anything for, the, for every half an hour. But I can only go up to 12 hours. So that's going to be between 0 and a half an hour. And then it's going to be 3 more dollars, which is $6. And that's going to be for anything beyond half a dollar up to, or half an hour up to an hour. And then 3 more dollars is $9. But it says we have an 8 dollar maximum. So I can only go up to eight dollars and that's for anything from one hour to a maximum of 12 hours. So that's what my equation is going to look like. So since 12 is my maximum, I'm going to count by ones. These are hours. And then on the side, I think I can count by ones also. Okay, so we're going to start with $3. So obviously if I'm not there, if I'm there zero hours, it's open circle. And that's only for a half an hour. So that's a closed circle at the half an hour. Then I'm going to jump up to 6. So open circle at a half an hour, up to an hour. So that's a little, little one, close circle at the one. And then after the one, open circle all the way to the 12. Okay. So oh, let me label this. This is money. Okay. What are the, what is the domain and the range? 
domain x values we can only park from zero to 12 hours and then my range is literally three six and eight because those are the only amounts of money that i will be charged okay last question let's say you plan to sell t-shirts as a fundraiser the wholesale t-shirt company charges you $10 a shirt for the first 75 shirts. After the first 75 shirts, you can purchase up to 150 shirts. The company will lower its price to $750 a shirt. After you purchase 150 shirts, the price will decrease to $5 a shirt. Write a function that models this situation. So f of x equals. So we have three different situations. First situation is $10 a shirt. So 10x. And that is for anything up to 75 shirts. Okay. Now for the second part, I am already going to pay for my 75 shirts. So 75 times $10 is $750. So that's my first 75 shirts. But now it's going to be $750 for any shirt past 75 shirts. So it's going to be x minus 75. And that's for 75, sh anything beyond 75 shirts, but only up to 150 shirts. So now, after I purchase all my 150 shirts, I'm going to pay $5 a shirt. So that means I have to plug 150 in to my second equation. So 750 plus 750 times 150 minus 75. That's how much money I'm paying for my 150 shirts. So if I plug that in, I get $1,312.50. And then beyond that, it's $5 a shirt, but I got to subtract out the $150 shirt, 150 shirts I already bought. So that's for anything greater than 150 shirts. So that's what my equation should look like. You try this last equation and we will go over the answer in class.